Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Japanese drama movie called The Lady Shogun and Her Men. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The premise of the movie is set in the era of a fictional Japanese dynasty called the Shotoku. A dangerous epidemic named Red Face Pox spreads around the country. The disease only affects men, and 8 out of 10 who fall victim to the plague die. With time, the population of men decreases at a frightening rate. By the end of the plague, the male population is a quarter of the female population. This causes a drastic change in the hierarchical structure of society. The political and economic positions that men held earlier are replaced by women. Moreover, the laborers responsible to earn an income for their families are also women. Men are considered delicate luxuries who deserve to be protected and nourished. Their only job is to look beautiful and sell seeds to the women who want children. Being married to a man has become the greatest of luxuries. Since they are so rare, only the daughters of the rich can afford to marry. Several men go into prostitution to take care of themselves and earn money. In such a society lives a middle-class family named the Mizuno family. They bear a 19-year-old son, Unoshin. Unlike most men who are only interested in makeup and dresses, Unoshin is a samurai. He has trained his entire life and is a great warrior. Although their family suffers financially, Unoshin's mother never allows him to go into prostitution. He is thankful for her thoughtfulness and loves her dearly. But occasionally, he spends the night with older women who are desperate for a baby. He does so as a favor to those who have lost their loved ones, to the red face pox. Out of the kindness of his heart, he refrains from accepting their money as well. The Mizuno house is always filled with women asking for Unoshin's hand in marriage. He is not just a great warrior, but is astonishingly beautiful and very kind. However, he rejects everyone's proposal, knowing that they only want him for his outer beauty. Unoshin is also in love with his childhood friend, Onobu. They have always liked each other, but never had the guts to confess because Onobu belongs to a wealthy family. Because of the gap between their social and financial status, Unoshin tries to keep his distance from her, but it never works. When their family's financial condition gets worse, Unoshin decides to lend himself to an uku. It is the intersection of a palace where the queen's male suitors live. They are trained to be beautiful so they can one day attract the attention of the queen, also known as Lady Shogun. The members of the uku are paid a hefty sum for their services, and if the queen likes them enough, they even get additional privileges. However, there are altogether 3,000 men competing in the uku. Much like how women are traditionally portrayed, the men are dramatic and are always competing about materialistic things. Unoshin tells Onobu about his plan to join the Uku. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. She begs him to reconsider, but Unoshin has already made his decision. He plants a goodbye kiss on her lips and walks away. In the following scene, Unoshin joins the Uku. On his first day, a teacher shows him around the place. He is told that he belongs to the lowest rank of men, who have to clean up after the higher ranking men. He eventually will get promoted, if his services are satisfactory. The current Lady Shogun is a seven-year-old girl, so the men have a long wait before they actually compete against each other for her attention. While in the orientation, the teacher and Unoshin come across the most powerful man of the Uku, Fujinami. Only one person can be in the right ranking of men, which is occupied by him. At the end of the orientation, Unoshin is asked to never speak of anything he sees or hears in the Uku. It is a tradition among the members of Uku to bully the newcomers. They make fun of Inoshin's hair and clothes, but he stands up for himself, teaching bullies the importance of his haircut for samurais. While working, he is given more tasks than others, but Inoshin is used to working hard to earn for his family. He manages to make friends with a quiet kid who he has to work with. The man reveals that the goldfish in the tank must be addressed with respect because their position is lower than the animals of the Uku. The bullies push Inoshin when he is carrying food, which leads to him starving for the first two days. One night, three higher-ranking men restrain him in his sleep and try to assault him. Unoshin, using his skills as a samurai, efficiently kicks their asses and sends them away. 
The next day, he tells a work buddy about what happened and finds out it is normal for men in the Uku to maintain sexual relationships with one another. Since their shogun is only seven years old and no other women are allowed in the establishment, they rely on each other to fulfill their sexual desires. Some even use their relationships with the higher officials in their favor to be promoted. Inoshin is shocked by the revelation because women would kill to have a male suitor outside the palace while men are wasting their seed on each other in here. He thinks the entire concept of Uku is unnecessary, but knows that his thought on the system doesn't matter. That afternoon, Unoshin sees some men fighting in the dojo next door. He uses his broom to practice his moves and is spotted by the highest ranking man, Fujinami. The man praises Unoshin's technique and asks him to join the others in the dojo. Even though the men in Unoshin's position are not allowed inside, Fujinami makes an exception for him. He is asked to fight the most talented fighter in the dojo, Tsuruoka. The others laugh at the decision, thinking that Unoshin can never beat someone as talented as Tsuruoka. However, they are left stunned when he doesn't take much time before proving his worth. Once Tsuruoka loses, he shows his arrogance and belittles Unoshin for having an unworthy talent because all that matters for men is to be pretty and have good manners. At night, before going to sleep, Unoshin tells his workmate that he doesn't like the superficial greatness of this place. In turn, the friend reveals how he was penniless outside the Uku. He was married, then divorced, for not giving his wife a child after several years. Uku is the only place he can survive, even though he has to work hard during the day, and the men take advantage of him at night. This puts things in perspective for Unoshin and makes him realize how hard it is for men outside. He was poor, but was lucky enough to have been born into a good family. So maybe Unoshin should stop being such a baby back bitch. The next day, news about Unoshin's bravery spreads around the Uku. Many teenage boys try to pursue him, complimenting his looks. When it gets dark, Tsuruoka comes to meet Unoshin and challenges him to another fight for his honor. Unoshin doesn't want to compete against him, but has to give in to his orders. The fight starts, and Tsuruoka is beaten this time as well. The loss is so humiliating for him that he commits the unthinkable. While he struggles on the ground, Unoshin shows mercy and kills him with his sword. The next day, he is asked what happened at night. As he was instructed, he denies meeting Tsuruoka altogether. Satisfied by the answer, the higher official lets him go. That day, the seven-year-old lady shogun passes away from an illness and a new older shogun is appointed. She is a strict woman who is willing to work hard for the betterment of society, unlike the previous shoguns who favored doing minimal work. On her first day of duty, she fires a woman for suggesting she wear fancier clothing. She doesn't want the workers of the palace to be bathed in extravagant jewelry while the country's economy is collapsing. Everyone else keeps low in front of her after that. The next day, she goes to the city disguised as a commoner. She comes across the harsh way the people live their lives. Most men are prostitutes who are owned by a brothel that treats them as commodities. People work for the entire day just to eat a single loaf of bread at night. Lady Shogun notices a kid running away from the brothel's owner after getting beaten and helps him by handing him an expensive piece of cloth. Nice, Lady Shogun. That kid will probably be murdered for that. In the Uku, the lady's arrival has brought immense joy as the men start preparing themselves, hoping to catch her eye. Only the highest class of men are brought in front of the Lady Shogun, so Unoshin has no hope of meeting her. That is, until Fujinami promotes him. Starting the next day, he prepares the dress he will be wearing when he first sees her. Unlike most men who go with extravagant materials and colorful designs, Unoshin chooses a simple black cloth and minimal design for his dress. His dress is made by a skillful tailor named Sakiwa. He does an excellent job on the attire and impresses Unoshin. He wants to reward the tailor for his work, but has nothing in his possession that could be valuable to him. Hence, Unoshin plants a kiss on his lips as a thank you gift. With time, the two become close friends and share several intimate moments together. On the day of the ceremony, everyone laughs at his horrendous choice. He is told to keep his head low in front of Lady Shogun. If she asks you what your name is, she would have chosen you as a suitor. 
The ceremony starts, and Lady Shogun trips on her way to the throne. Someone from the men snickers, which catches her attention. When asked who it was, Unoshin comes forward. After taking a look at his face and simple garments, Lady Shogun asks him his name, surprising everyone. They are set to spend the night together the next day. Later that day, Unoshin is informed that since Lady Shogun is a virgin, he will be considered an elite for taking her virginity. But since the act is also the greatest form of crime, he has to be executed in the morning. Unoshin is shocked but accepts the punishment as his fate. Moreover, a lot of money will be sent to his family as his insurance, so he has nothing to complain about. At the same time, Lady Shogun is also told about this rule, which she was unaware of until now. In only a day, she had grown infatuated with Inoshin, and the thought of him being killed doesn't appeal to her. Then, we see Fujinami chatting with the teacher over a board game. It turns out that they saw Inoshin as a threat and deliberately made him appeal in front of Lady Shogun to get rid of him. After his death, the teacher plans to woo Lady Shogun and be the father to the next Shogun. Before going into the intimacy room, all Unoshin can think of is his childhood love, Onobu. He imagines confessing his feelings to her and is devastated that they could never be together. After that, he is made ready with makeup and perfume and finally meets the lady in her room. She starts a conversation by asking him his full name and reveals that her given name is Nobu, which sounds very similar to Onobu. Unoshin cannot help but get emotional at the mention of his lover's name. With tearful eyes, he asks for permission to call the lady by her name for the night. Unoshin is grateful that he at least gets to spend the last night of his life with someone that has his lover's name. Following that, the two enjoy a night of passion and sorrow. The next morning, Unoshin wakes up and is told that he did his job well. Then, he is kneeled in front of the officials and executed with a katana to his neck. We see his work friend and Sakiwa crying, mourning his death. His family receives the money and a letter of condolence, but is told that he died of a disease. The scene changes to a few months later. Onobu has not forgotten her only love. She cries in his memory every day and visits his grave frequently. On one such visit, she is left speechless because Unoshin stands in front of her, alive and well. He reveals that Lady Shogun was kind enough to spare his life the day he was supposed to be executed. Who did she kill instead? She never supported the harsh ways of the palace and sent a man in secret to help him, making it seem like the execution was successful. Onobu embraces him in a hug, promising to never leave his side. In the last scene, we see Lady Shogun ordering all the men from Uku to go out and live their lives freely. She also provides them with starting funds to make their lives easier. Their departure will ensure more childbirth and less burden on the royal treasure. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.